Hey guys, on today's show, if you're new to ham radio or you're thinking about getting into the hobby, this is the episode you want to see. So do not miss this right here, right now on ham radio for non-techies. Well, welcome back, guys. Welcome to Ham Radio for Non-Techies, where we try to simplify the ham radio hobby, get you to study, pass, and get on the air as quickly as possible without the least amount of stress and BS, all right? So anyway, uh, this weekend, I spent some time at the Belton Ham Fest up in uh, Belton, Texas, and I uh, got to meet a couple fellow YouTubers, got to meet Tank Radio, Ham Radio 2.0, and Mike from K at MRD Radio Stuff. Had a great time. I met a whole bunch of other people as well. We kind of hung out and just talked radio and just hobbies and different little things the whole weekend. And we actually went to the actual uh, the actual convention. And the convention was cool. It had, you know, they had a lot of parts. If you're doing like a project or something, uh, they had a lot of parts for things like that. Lots of connectors, wires, stuff like that. A bunch of uh, old antiquated radios and old equipment, used equipment, you know, a lot of stuff like that. There wasn't, it wasn't really like the big festival where giga parts and ham radio outlet and places like that would come to and i was going up there specifically to find a uh, 705 i've been convinced by the qrp people that i needed a 705 in my life so but i was up there and we were talking and guys like oh no you're not you're probably not gonna see a 705 here it's not that kind of a show not that kind of a show well i got lucky and uh, after i walked out of the uh, convention hall they had a big parking lot full of uh, guys that set up trucks and had set up little tents and stuff and tables where they're selling off all their stuff. Well, just uh, come to find out, uh, Jason was telling me that uh, MTC Radio from uh, P Paris, Texas, I think they are, somewhere, they had come down, and sure enough, I go out in the parking lot, and the guy's out there, he's got his truck set up, got a couple tables set up, and a whole bunch of brand new radios, and sitting right there in front of me, although I was blind and didn't see it sitting in front of me, was a brand new 705. So I picked that up, had a great weekend, had a great time. Uh, real quick, a couple little announcements before I get on to the actual uh, thing here. Uh, October 16th and 17th is National Support Your Parks Day, or su National Support Your Parks Weekend, something like that, whatever. Um, a lot of people are going to be going out, a lot of ham radio people are going to be going out to parks and doing POTA activations. POTA means parks on the air, for those of you newbies who don't know anything about that. And that's basically where you bring a radio out to a park, and you set up an antenna, and you set your radio gear up, and you try to make as many contacts as you can. Uh, 10 contacts will actually activate the park and you just go out and have fun. So it might go check your local clubs, go check with anybody might, you might know who does that kind of stuff. They might be able to invite you out and come do a uh, POTA activation, maybe learn about it, maybe get into, get into the, uh, the bug like the rest of us here and just have a lot of fun. The other thing is, uh, let's see, I think this coming weekend in Houston is the uh, Wings, Over, Wings Over Houston Air Show. And uh, my club specifically, we have about well, 50, 60, 70 people from our club and surrounding clubs uh, volunteering to go out to this air show and provide support using our, our radios on the two meter band and just having a great time meeting people, meeting each other and uh, having a good thing. So if you want to come out to that, if you're in the Houston area, the Wings Over uh, Houston is a very, very big uh, deal out here. We've had people I've heard from the guy who coordinates this. He was saying... Uh, People from other countries come out just for this thing because of what we do as a club to organize and support this particular event. So if you're into that kind of thing, you're into jets and airplanes, vintage and new and this and that, come check it out. I think you'll have a blast. Anywho, on to the actual show now. Thank you for letting me babble. The reason I said if you're a new ham or if you're thinking about getting into ham radio, why you need to see this episode is I picked up a book recently, and I picked up about a month ago, and I wanted to read through it and thoroughly test it out and, and check it out and see if I liked it and see if it, you know, what it what it brought to the table as far as value for people, other people looking to buy it. And that book is the ARRL Operating Manual. Now, this is about 240 pages, and it's just a fantastic book. You know, here on Ham Radio for Non-Techies, we try to simplify things, right? This book... I swear it was written by my doppelganger. My, yeah, my doppelganger. <laughs> Very easy to follow. It is packed full of information. And I did a little presentation here. So let's just pop over to the desktop and get that started. Okay, so like I said, if you're new to ham radio or you're thinking about getting into ham radio and you want to kind of know what we do and what it's all about without getting all the 
the physics and the science and the crazy engineering speak and all that kind of stuff, this is the book for you. Uh, so you want to want to go pick up one of these if you can. But here, let's just go over quick some of the topics on, on in the book here. Give me one second. Okay, so the topics covered. It's very. There's only like four four sections total in the book, but each section is packed with all kinds of awesome information. So the first one, the first section is on basic station operating techniques. It'll, co it'll cover how to assemble your radio station, how to assemble it up, get it all ready to going. Basic operating procedures like how to talk on the radio, how to do this, how to do that. Uh, HF digital communications that differentiates what you do in HF versus like VHF, UHF, or repeater work. Uh, it, dis it, it discusses in detail, in plain English detail, not engineer speak, uh, repeaters, digital voice data, how to use the digital uh, things, like say you want to get an FT8 or FT4, uh, RIDI, all these different things are all explained in just a couple of pages. And I was having some issues getting my FT8 set up a while back, and I took this book and I opened it up. It's like, okay, well, I know quite a bit because I've been doing, I mean, work with FT8, but I followed what the book was talking, and I found a couple little things that weren't discussed or things you have to kind of hunt around for. It was all right there. Uh, I was very happy about this. That got me up and running really quick. Uh, it covers amateur satellites, image communications, uh, portable and mobile ops. If you're going to think about getting a mobile radio or want to do portable stuff like Dupota or Soda, he covers a lot of that stuff in there. Under the radio clubs and public service section, they talk about group activities for the radio amateur, preparing for the next generation, uh, ARRL field day. Field day is a fantastic thing. There's two of those, one, one in the summer, one in the winter. Um, public service operating, if you feel like doing and using your hobby as more of a service and getting into the public service aspect of ham radio, it covers that briefly and goes through the different things. And it's just it's full of resources that are going to help you and explain stuff to you in a very simple manner. And I took a little quick screenshot of one of the pages here on the VHF, UHF, repeaters, and digital voice data thing. But, I mean, it's got illustrations. It's got all kinds of things that explains it to you. The way he speaks in the book, the way, the way it's all written, very easy to follow. If you can spell Internet, you can read this book and understand it. So that's why I highly recommend this book for anybody who's looking to get into it. Um, on on air activities and radio sports. This uh, this covers, of course, awards uh, that you can get doing DX contacts, uh, confirming contacts, contesting competitive wireless. And it does cover you know Poda and Soda. And the, the end of the book is actually kind of cool. On the back of the book here, um, it actually has some information. It, it, may, it may or may not be interesting to you. This is the table of allocation of international call signs. So it shows you how or why certain call signs get allocated the way that they do. I probably should take it off a of full screen for this. Um, let me pop back over to my desktop real quick. We'll finish this right up. Um, but it goes through a lot of stuff. All your cue signals are in here. Your procedural signals are in here. Morse code, uh, Morse abbreviations, uh, CW abbreviations, lots of CW stuff, uh, Spanish phonetics, alternative phonetics, uh, the regular phonetics that we use you know, Alpha, Brava, Delta, so on and so forth. It covers the RST system. I did a video a while back on the RST system, your uh, your uh, readability, signal strength, and tone settings when you're doing uh, stuff. But it covers like, you know, shows you how to do radiograms. Um, I mean, it's just, there's a lot of stuff on the back end of this book, just little resources, stuff you could photocopy and use in your, uh, in for, for you in the hobby here. Uh, so I highly recommend this book. I can't really say enough about it. There's so much stuff in here, and for being only 240 pages, being a little tiny book, you're going to get a hell of an education from it. Uh, so let's pop back over to the desktop. So that's the basic rundown of this book, and I can't I can't emphasize it enough. If you are confused about stuff or want to know more and want to get like the basic dope of what's going on in ham radio, this is the book for you. I know they push the uh, AWRL handbooks, the five, the five or six seri uh, volume set. I have that, and it's a great book, but it is very, very full of a lot of engineer speak. If you don't have an engineering background or don't know a whole lot about physics, things like that, it's probably going to confuse you or irritate you and make you go, this isn't for me. This book will, get, will, will grab you by the throat and say, hey, you need to get into this hobby. It's worth it. So, how do you get the book? ARRL's website has it. Uh, Amazon, I'll send my affiliate link down below. You can get it from Amazon. And it, I, I've heard this from my, uh, this was from my club when I went to go do uh, 
some V uh, grading for some testing we did a couple weeks ago. Uh, currently, if you take your ham radio exam, and I think it's only for technician. It might be for anything, but I think it's only for technician. Uh, you can get a coupon from your testing facility. So the guys giving you the tests should have these or should have some knowledge of it. And you have to go check with them and make sure. But if you pass your technician test and get that little coupon, have a little coupon code, you can get this book for free. So if that's something you're thinking about, if you're thinking about getting into ham radio, you want to go ahead and pass your test and just go and study for it and get everything done, that's the way to do it. And, tr and try, to get that, uh, try to get that book for free. Otherwise, I suggest going to ARRL website, or if you want to help out the channel here, I always like support. Uh, click on the Amazon link I'll have down below, and you can purchase the book. I think it's about 20 bucks, but I'll tell you what, it'll be the best 20 bucks you've spent to invest into this hobby and get yourself fully immersed in it so you can start enjoying it and get the majority of your questions answered. Now, does it cover everything? Not even close. It covers a lot. And for a beginner getting into, into the hobby, this will give you answers to a lot of things. It might actually spark your interest in other aspects of the hobby that you may not have thought about doing. So that's the one that's one of the reasons I suggest really grabbing this. You're, you're gonna you're gonna be if you get into the hobby and you start buying radios and doing stuff on the air and actually taking action with it, you're gonna get immersed in other things as you go along. This is just kind of like I kind of like look look at it like as a booster to get into the uh, hobby. So that's all I've got. Um, you know, check out the book. I highly recommend this for anybody looking to get into ham radio. You will not regret it. You'll probably end up thanking me later. Those of you guys that had this book or have had this book before, you know, put some comments down below. Let the other people, let the newer people that are watching this, this show, you know, know your opinion on it. I mean, I think it's a great book and I think it's an invaluable resource to have because you can bring it with you and just bring it out, you know, out in the field and look up something real quick to get kind of caught up in something. It's just packed full of stuff. Anywho, that's all I got today, guys. I hope you enjoyed the show. Uh, if you like the video, please give me a thumbs up and remember to subscribe by clicking the little, the little subscribe button down below and clicking on the little bell and that'll notify you when I do new videos. Also, guys, don't forget down below in my links, I do have a link to my Patreon if you'd like to support the channel. I don't have a whole lot of stuff as far as like Benny's right now. I'm still working on all that stuff. But if you want to support the channel, help op, you know, keep me operating and running and doing the things I do, feel free to join. I got two uh, subscribers so far, which I really appreciate. Thank you very much. And we'll just go from there. Anyway, guys, I uh, hope you enjoyed the show today. Go check out this book. I think it'll benefit a lot of you, especially if you're just kind of, you know, on the fence of what goes on in ham radio. And uh, let me know what you think. Let me know if you get the book, hit me up on comments, email me, whatever. Let me know what you think about it. If you got any other questions, as always, put the comments down below. I'll answer every comment that I get, and we'll go from there. Until next time, guys, this is Handwriter for Non-Techies, and we are clear.